What is up my peepholes? This is your guy Cly, and welcome back to that thrifting series. Go ahead and ignore the state of the cat. We just came in from being outside and he decided to roll around in the dirt despite me running to catch him. So he may or may not have the occasional bit of grit or a nice big gray swatch on his cheek. He's a silly cat. Anyway, today's video is not just about Kitty Belly, it is also about video games. Because I've built up quite the backlog and since I'm trying to keep these videos to some sort of theme per video, I kind of have a backlog now. So yeah. First up, let's go with my most recent find. And that would be this little guy. This is just a standard silver Game Boy Advance. You see them everywhere and you know from a few of my previous videos that I actually have a lot of original Game Boy Advance systems. I'll go ahead and link eh, right about here-ish. Yeah, a card should have popped up by now. The thing is, I could not turn this down for the price. There he goes. Because it was three bucks. That's unheard of these days at the thrift stores by me because they will sell you ones that are completely missing the back battery compartment. Oh, and those are the batteries that were in there when I bought it. They sell ones that are missing the back battery compartment for like 20 bucks. So when I found one for three, had to have it. Here's the best part. That was just the beginning. Because not too long after that, the cat decided to walk around the table and shake my camera. Let's just grab that and stabilize it. Don't want anyone else getting motion sickness like I will in editing. But I also found this. An original gray. This was just sitting in a hanging bag in the toys section of all places at a Savers. It's kind of crazy. I paid four bucks for it. Fully functional, got a little bit of wear on the front, but I'm not turning down an old grave for that price. I know somewhere around here I actually have my original from when I was a kid. The handhelds didn't stop there though, because I also found this big guy. For two dollars. I don't know where my original Game Gear is actually, so... Yeah, there's that. I have it around here somewhere, I think. It might be at my parents' place in their attic, though. That, thinking about it, that's the more likely thing. But, two bucks. It works. Sadly, it is missing the battery covers. I need to replace those at some point. But, for two dollars, I just couldn't turn this down. For some reason, it was sitting in the toys. Because the thrift stores around here have gotten a little bit bad about organizing. Maybe it's the holiday season. They used to grab all of the game systems, put them in the case, no matter what condition, no matter what they were. You weren't going to get out of there for under 15 bucks for some of the handhelds. But now they're winding up in the toys section, in the electronics section, the loose boxes in the electronics section, and even the hanging bags. I'm not complaining. I'm cleaning house. I like it. And actually, I have something related to this guy for my next item. Jump cut. And the mystery item is this. A GBA TV tuner and analog video adapter. What this does is allow me to hook my GBA up and use it as a portable television or a very small screen that I can watch videos on. That's really about it. Yeah, it's a bit more than I'd normally pay at nine bucks, but it's basically new old stock in that nobody had ever actually taken it out of the wrapping, or at least inside. It has been taken out of shrink if it ever was in shrink. I don't know, to be honest. And what it came with is, well, the device itself, which I've gone ahead and hooked up so that I can test it out in a second. All kinds of cables, in fact, the leads for the video adapter, ridiculously long. I'm hoping they're not smacking my mic cord, so if you heard any weird buzzing a second ago, I apologize. And they also came with the crappiest earbuds I have seen in a long time. And this is coming from somebody who reviews crappy earbuds. 
I'm not going to be needing these. Let me get the box out of the way. There we go. It's actually quite interesting. It hinges so that you can plug in your GBA original, as well as the SP, though I don't think it was actually intended for that. And it has a little speaker on the front, which is poop, to be perfectly honest. It is poop. If you crank it up more than, like, I want to say 4%, you're going to be getting a lot of garble, especially when you test it with heavy metal like I did. I should also now plug the band Brothers of Metal. That is my current addiction. It's good. If you like power metal. So, you, basically, you're going to take your Game Boy Advance, slot it in like so, and there you are. Actually, I've not tested it in this lighting before. And admittedly, I'm not a big fan of the silver and the blue. I would rather use the matching set, but I don't have batteries in this one. And the batteries in this one are about to die, so I'm going to just do a quick test. I actually can see. Let me grab my phone. Aha! It is giving me the error that it always gives when it at first initializes. All you do is force it to cycle through. There we go. Oh, come on, Roku. I know you're existing. Aha! It is definitely giving me bouncy vision, but I can fix that momentarily. You can't really see it on this screen, so I'm going to swap it out for a GBA SP momentarily. There we go. My little dumpster dived SP. Unfortunately, to use this device, you have to have the speaker facing away from you, but that is very convenient for the way I have to run the cables right now, so there we go. Let's see if we can make it out here with this front-lit screen. Sadly, I don't have the back-lit version. Ooh, that's actually just as meh. And once again, cycle through that. Let it sync. It's not the most effective device. And I'm going to assume you can make that out. I can't really make it out through my viewfinder, to be honest. So I'm going to switch to one last device. And that is an original DS. Well, no, not an original DS because it would just be as bad as that one. And I don't know where my original DS went in the move. I think it's with my DS Lite. So I'm going to have to use my girlfriend's DS Lite. Fortunately, it's not pink like the glue gun. Oh, and if you're wondering if it'll work with the Game Boy Micro, well, it does slot. You can't reach the power switch. So I don't know. Plus, the person who threw out the Game Boy Micro didn't throw out a power cable. So, while I know it works, it had just enough charge to test, it's dead now. I have to order a cheap USB lead online. Oh, and for those of you who are jealous about me finding a micro in the trash, I don't care. <laughs> no, I, I do like to rub that kind of stuff in just because it's really odd that I found something like that. I will never find that again. That was in a very nice neighborhood that popped up, and I wasn't the one diving. Once again, my girlfriend's mom was just scoping out a house where the people were moving and very wasteful. There we go. Pull up the DS light. Much better. Much better there. Oh, you can see me in the bottom screen. New. No. And it does, once again, detect. Oh, that is much better on my viewfinder. And cycle through again. Hey, I can make it out, can you? Well, does not look like you're going to be doing much beyond that. So let's start the video and just see how it looks. I do apologize for just how long this took. Okay, there it went. Downside, I have this hooked up to a dumpster-dived Roku HD. The app for YouTube is a little bit slow. That's why I had it prepped. Let's see if it will... It should load. This is one of my non-monetized videos from a while back. In fact, it's the dumpster-dived tech one I linked earlier. It's a later screen in it. Okay, now it's done that. Oh, come on. You don't need to pause. There we go. It's just buffering. I do actually like the way it looks on a DS Lite, so I hope I can find mine. Or do a shell swap on the one that I have found. 
in the trash, even though it is technically water damaged, so we'll see if I can get it up and running. And actually, I didn't do a test on that. Let's see, where's the volume? Okay, oh, that's right, you control the volume through your shoulder buttons. Okay, it does appear you do not get any audio out when you're using a DS Lite. So, as a standard monitor, it works great. You don't have to depend on the speaker, unless I'm in, you know, I did actually turn the speaker on, which means the green light should be on. That's weird. Did I accidentally unplug it? I might have accidentally unplugged it. Let's find out. Is this the lead? I think that's the lead. I don't need to plug this in. Aren't you glad I wear a lavalier mic? You can hear all of this fun stuff. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Just gonna... There we go. So, this took longer than I thought, just because I was doing all kinds of weird testing. Let me pause myself really quickly. That was back when I was a bit more mellow. I'm just gonna... There we go, I'm muted. So, once you have power, you do get a little bit more brightness and the audio, but you don't necessarily need to have this plugged in. That big snafu aside, on to the next item. And this video is going to probably go into 20 minutes, ain't it? Apparently, this is the hour of yappy dogs, leaf blowers, and airplanes. Let's hope none of that, or at least minimal amounts of that, make it into the final edit. Anyway, the next item is one that cost me 50 bucks. And as you've seen in this series, as well as this video so far, that's not exactly an amount of money I typically drop in a thrift store. So, what did I think was worth $50? Well, how about a slightly broken in television? Yeah, no. Actually, I would not have paid that much just for the Intellivision because I already have a not broken in television that I got for five. So why did I pay 50 for this? Well, there's about to be a lot of noise, so I'm thinking I'm gonna just do a series of jump cuts. I'm gonna hate this in editing. So the Intellivision came with a slightly manky video connector. Just gonna move that out of the way, need to repair it later. As well as the voice synthesis module. You have no idea how many times it took me to say that, and you never will. Which is quite nice by itself, but the real reason I paid $50 for this is after this jump cut. And the real reason I was willing to pay 50 bucks for the Intellivision is this. 34 games, the bulk of which are actually complete in box. Most of them are just the cartridge and the overlays, but a good chunk of these even have the manuals. If you're wondering what we've got going on here, the light blues are sports, such as, let's see what we've got here, skiing. How exciting. The green boxes are your casino games. Red would have to be your standard battle games and some adventure games. White are the ones meant to be used with the voice synthesis module, including the infamous B-17 Bomber. Purple would have to be uh, board games like Backgammon and Utopia. Ah, yes. Uh, looks Risk-esque. Just, I guess they couldn't get the license to Risk. Deep Blue are space battle games, such as Space Armada. And your red games include such gems as Night Stalker and... The ones that sold me on this would have to be Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, as well as Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, The Treasure of Tarman. Yeah, I had to look down. Let me double check. Yes, the AD&D &D games are actually complete in box with manuals 
and overlays. This one's actually a flap box. Sadly, these overlays have seen better days. I guess this game got a lot of play. Fortunately, I actually have a second copy of this that I picked up for two bucks. It comes with another set of overlays. Sadly, it does not have the manuals. I've seen individual games go at these thrift stores for about five bucks. So to get this many, plus the unit, plus the voice synthesis module for that much, it was a done deal. I've got one more item to show you, and to be honest, it's one of my best video game finds of all time. Jump cut. Well, crossfade. It's not really a jump cut anymore. So like I said, this last item has to be hands down one of my greatest video game thrifts of all time. And that is Wasteland for the Apple IIe in mint condition, still shrink wrapped. I, I can't believe I found this. Some of you might not think this is really that impressive, but keep in mind, out of box copies of this, just the floppy disks sell in the $50 plus range. Copies with a beat up box sell in the $80 to $100 range. In shrink like this, according to quite a few people that have seen it by now, I actually posted this not only on Imager to see what people thought, but also I tweeted it at Lazy Game Reviews, and they're all saying that this goes for a couple hundred in its current condition. I got lucky. I especially got lucky because this was sitting upright on the DVD shelf on one of the busiest days at the thrift store I found it at. And the DVD area is already one of the most high traffic areas. I'm just lucky the thrifters in my area, especially the flippers in my area, know absolutely nothing about good video games, obscure video games, good board games, or basically any of the areas I focus in. Hence why I'm able to find stuff like this for two bucks, Audio-Technica headphones for four, and somebody's entire late 70s, early 80s D&D collection for like two bucks a pop. I think I'd have a video on that. I'll just pop that up around here. What's really cool is that after I tweeted this at LGR, a new video went up about, well, a week later. I actually found this last Saturday. The new video went up today. And this is in the community submission section. I did good. And no, if you're asking if I'm going to be selling this for a profit, no. I am a Fallout fanboy, and this is the game that spawned the franchise. Fallout, if you didn't know, is a spiritual successor to Wasteland. And, well, seeing as how I've made Fallout-themed chainmail and repainted a dice set to match... I'm a little bit of a diehard. I'm not going to drop a crap ton of money on collectibles, but when I can get something worth this much for two bucks, it is going on the shelf of honor. And that's all I really have for you today. Well, okay, that's all I have for you today in a reasonably sized episode. So I think I'm going to call it here. Until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.